And if you have your Bibles, I want you to turn to the book of Malachi. And, and I said if you uh, hopefully came with your steel-toed shoes on today because I told you we've been talking about some real challenging things that need to be talked about. But very good things, very powerful things, very truthful things that we can apply to today. And, uh, and so uh, Malachi is like the last book in the New T Old Testament right before Matthew. So if you don't know where it's at, just go to Matthew and take a left. And it's the first book, and it's, it's the last book in the Old Testament. And there's only four little chapters, and I have read through them, uh, you know. And this is one of the most powerful little books in the Bible. A lot of people don't want to read Malachi because it, it, it ain't for the faint of heart, okay? And then something happened to me a year or two ago. I read it out of the mess. How many love the message translation? I love, I love uh, Eugene Peterson and the message translation because he gets it real. I mean, he just breaks it down where people like me can even understand it. Amen? I mean, like to be able to understand the Bible. You know, some people ask me, is it okay to read anything but the King James? I say, absolutely. Why would you read the these and thous when we never talk like that? So people think they're going to go to hell if they read something besides. Don't get me wrong, I respect the New King James, but it was a translation too, by the way. You know, and so it's okay to read the message. I read it. I, I would love to read Proverbs out of the message. Anytime I'm preparing a message, I'll read the passage out of my Bible, the New King James, but then I'll break out the message every time and. Almost always it gives me a different perspective, a different thought. And I said, like, oh, I didn't see this. And he just makes it so real and in your face sometimes. And, and I've said about the passage, the chapter we're going to read today. Uh, you know, I love to preach, but you don't even need to preach this. It'll preach itself. So this is some good stuff, amen. How I many know when you read a passage, and it'll, it'll preach itself? Uh, that's a good passage, okay. And so I want to put my little house up there. And... Uh, We've been going through the core values, okay? And we're on worship, but we've, we've connected now worship with honor. Everybody say honor. honor. And, and I don't know if you were here last week, but it was a little tough sledding a little bit, you know? But how many, I mean, how many were able to overcome last week finding out that it's not all about you? Everybody okay? Because everybody we found a hard lesson that God even said, listen, I'm not doing this for your sake. First and foremost... What, why, do, why is he doing? Why is there grace? Why is there mercy first and foremost? For his name's sake. He cares about his great name. Now guess what? We're the beneficiaries of him caring about his great name. Because he said the very people who messed it up and made a mess out of it, I'm going to give them grace and mercy and I'm going to hollow my name to the very people that messed it up. I don't know about you, but I can raise my hand and say, that's me. I messed it up big time. Anybody mess it up big time? And you know, and he says, listen, I'm going to take the very people that are broken, messed up, and by the grace of God, I'm going to raise you up out of the ashes. And remember this verse? I'm going to turn your weed patch into the Garden of Eden. And then the whole world's going to know that I'm a great God because I see him in you. The beautiful work he's doing in you. How many God's doing a beautiful work in you? That's the grace of God, you guys. That's the goodness of God. This is nothing more, nothing less than the mercy and the grace of God that we're not consumed. That we're even sitting here this morning. It's nothing but the goodness and the grace of God. Do I hear an amen? amen. Am I the only one that believes that? I'm telling you, God is good. Amen. amen. And you know, and, and I got a crazy story, but some of y'all's story, man, people hear your story, they say, man, there got to be a God. It got to be God, amen. Because I knew you. I knew that we're talking miracle after miracle after miracle. People coming out of darkness into the light is the greatest glory to God of anything. When people say, I don't want that anymore, I don't want you, God. And I got the power to choose whatever I want. But I choose that's love. That's love. And so you can't disconnect his presence, the house of honor, and worship. Worship is about honor. And honor is about worship. You will serve what you fear. Listen to me. Everybody's going to bow down to something. You were created to worship. The question is, what are you going to worship? Most of us worship ourselves. Me, 
even myself and I, we get up for me. When you find out the gospel, the gospel says, no, you don't get up for you anymore. You don't get up for me anymore. I'm getting up for him. Amen. Not what do I want to do today. God, what do you want to do today? You're Lord, I'm not. You're king, I'm not. You're on the throne, I'm not. We say amen. amen. <laughs> See, but you're gonna, you know, you know, Bob Dylan had a great song. Everybody's gonna serve somebody. It might be the devil, or it might be the Lord, but you're gonna serve somebody. You know, we were created to worship, and people say, "Why does God want us to worship Him? Because He is pure, He is good, He is love." And when we worship Him, it, we enter into an intimate relationship that is only good to us. But he knows that if we don't worship him, we're going to worship something else that ain't so good. How many ever worship something that wasn't so good? You bow down to something that wasn't so good. Let me just say this. What you fear is what you worship. If you fear man, you worship man. If you fear and respect God, you'll worship God. The beginning of wisdom, Proverbs 1.7, is the fear of the Lord. Message puts it like this. The beginning of wisdom, the beginning of all things is to bow down to the Lord. Have you bowed down to him? Have you surrendered to him and said, you're God, I'm not? This is a hard message, especially in America. Because in America, pretty much it's all about us. It's all about us. So, so I want to be a church when we come to church, we get up in the morning. This, this is tough. I'm working on it. And I'm trying to get more and more. When I get up in the morning, I'm like, God, I'm not getting up for me this morning. I'm getting up for you. What do you want to do in this vessel this morning? How can you use me today to be a blessing, to bring glory and honor, to bring fame, not shame, to your name? Help me, Lord. Be a vessel of one. How many? And so, so anyway, the title I titled, I got like three titles, okay? And the main one is the Father's Business. Remember last week? Remember when they came and Jesus was 12, he's in the temple, they said, Jesus, don't you know you, you caused a lot of anxiety? We thought you were with us. We had to come all the way back there and do something. Look at you. What are you doing, Jesus? He's 12 years old. He said, Mom and Dad, don't you know I must be about my Father's business? At 12 years old, you guys, and we said, oh, you got to wait till you're at least 18 before you get serious about God. What a lie. What, well, that's where the thief kills and steals and destroys. He said, at 12, I must be about, what's the father's business? Remember last week, we went back in the Old Testament, and we found out his business was all about his name. His business was bringing back Honor to his name. His name has been defiled by his own people. It's quiet here in this Methodist church. I love Methodist. It is a little quiet. Did I who said again? His name has been defiled, not by the world. I don't think that's what bothers him. How many know he's not upset that the world acts like the world? But I'm talking about his kids. That's why he said, listen, kids, don't take my name if you're going to take it in vain. And make it common and like every other name. Because it isn't common and it isn't like every other name. It is the only name by which we might be saved. It's the name above all names. Amen? And he said, don't take my name and not let it produce in you what it was created to produce in you. If you're going to take my name, you need to take it seriously. And at the end of the service last week, we said, Lane, come up here. And I, I said, you either want to do two, two things. Have a funeral, bury your past, or have a wedding and renew your vows. Maybe both. Because I mean, you need to bury your past and make a new commitment. Say, Lord, because when you get married, I mean, the gal, what does she do? She takes the name of the... Groom. Amen. And I know we're the bride of Christ. And we say, I do. I'm yours. We take his name. And now we carry the name 
that is above every name. And he said, don't do it in vain. They were, I was surprised how many people come and say, Pastor, I thought that was cussing. I thought that was saying, you know what? <laughs> so you better quit taking the name for it. Now that ain't got nothing to do with this. It's despising and dishonoring the name above all names. Making it common. Making it common. That's all right. Whatever. Yeah, I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. I believe in God. I go to church once in a while. <laughs> so anyway, so, so that's where we're at. So, so this is about honor, and, and, I, and I'm not up here trying to say I'm perfect at this either. But this is a passion of my heart. That's why I'm up here like saying, come on, you guys. And the guys that are in hands house, the girls that are in hands house, they've been hearing this. And you watch them worship. They worship with all their heart. They worship with all that is within them. You know why? Because they got the light. They got the light came on. Like, listen, worship is a response to the goodness of God. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, all your mind. Amen. What does that look like? I don't know what that looks like. This is my favorite pose. Pastor Dick, man, does he ever quit talking? No. You know what time it is? They don't sing another song? Are you kidding me? Why do you keep singing that same song over and over? <laughs> and we know, like, I'm, I'm not talking about camera. There's people in the camera right there. <laughs> there's some people in the camera right there. So, anyway, so are you guys ready for this? Take a deep breath. This is good news, you guys. This, this, this is what's going to set you apart, me apart. How many want to be different? See, it's, it's your attitude towards worship. It's your attitude towards your Father. See, you're not here for you anymore. Your life is over. Can you handle that? See, he says, if you come after me, deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow me. You try to save your life, you're going to lose it. But you've got to figure this out. It's when you lose your life that life really starts. That's where the fun comes in. Well, now you're living for him. It's an exciting life, amen? You never know what's going to happen <laughs> when you're living for God, amen? It's crazy. Good crazy, amen? God, what are we going to do today? What are we gonna, how are you going to touch somebody today? Who are you going to run in today? God, just let me make a difference in somebody's life today. Let me be like Jesus today. So I don't know about you, but I'm in a scary place in my life, but God's really telling me how much like Jesus can you become before you take your last breath? Oh, I, 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 told, I was praying to that. I said, Jesus, I don't know, I'll never, ever, because I know I got this messed up flesh I'm dealing with. But how many know we cop out and we use excuses and we were created to be conformed into the image of his son? He has given us grace. He has given us the power of the Holy Spirit. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives in you. He's given you another spirit, which is one of the same kind who will do in his absence what he would do if he was present. And how much like Jesus could we become if we gave it all we had? How much could we love like him? How much could we forgive like him? How about this? How much could we see treasure, not trouble, like he did? Good. He always saw treasure when other people saw trouble. I think God would look to me and say, oh, that's trouble. No, he said, no, I, I got treasure down in there. I tell people some treasure is buried deeper than others, amen? Some of you had to go get a backhoe, you know, but it was in there. <laughs> you got to dig a little ways because it was buried down in there deep. But there's, that's usually the best treasure of all, amen? That's the rich stuff. That's the good stuff. See, how, so I think we could, you guys. At least we could become more like Jesus, amen? I think we should become more like Jesus if we're walking this out, you know? And we'll never fully be like him, I know, but that should be our heart's desire, okay? So here we go. The Father's business, and I'm going to talk about being a champion of honor. I'm going to talk to you about it. Everybody say, shut the door. Shut the door. And we're going to get to verse 10. We'll say, is there not one among us who will rise up and shut the door on this dishonor and disrespect of our great God? Like the woman with the alabaster jar. You ain't treating my Jesus that way. Get out of the way. You know, I don't care what you do to me. I'm shutting the door on this dishonor. You're not going to treat my God like that. 
He's the one who loved me when nobody else loved me. He believed in me when nobody else believed me. He forgave me when I didn't think I was ever going to see forgiveness. And you're not going to treat him like that. He deserves the very, very best. Does he deserve our best? Amen. All right, so uh, God is looking for champions of honor who will rise up and say, I'm going to be one of them champions of honor. I'm going to get up. I'm going to shut the door. I don't know what you're going to do. Or I don't know what you're going to do. But I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to strive to be a champion of honor. For the glory of God. Amen. So here we go. Malachi chapter 1. And it's verse 1. It says, The burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. And like I said, I'm going to stop right there. <laughs> and that's okay. We've got plenty of time. I don't know, does anybody feel this burden? My wife can tell you, you want to get me stirred up, you want to get my blood boiling, is when I just see God being dishonored. How many think that ought to become something that we all carry together? That is not the way the church is supposed to act. Does anybody ever feel that? Like, we're the ones that carry this burden with Malachi. It is the burden of the Lord. It's a, and in the next verse, it says, I have loved you. And one, I love one translation says, this is God. You've got to get, get the attitude here with God. He says, he says, hey, this is the burden of the Lord. He says, have I not loved you? I don't know. Did you get that attitude? Let me say it again. I'm going to try to do it. Have I not loved you? Have I not believed in you? Have I not been there for you? Come on, guys. Have I not loved you? No greater love has anyone than this. And he's like, how many see his heart? He's like, I don't get it. Why are you treating me that way? Don't you understand how much I love you? Haven't I been there for you? Haven't I loved you? Haven't I been there every single time you needed me? Why are you treating me this way? How many see his heart? That's Malachi. He's like, he's like, I'm, I'm giving you everything. What have I done to deserve this dishonor? And disrespect. Have you lost focus of who I am? Okay? I told you it was going to be quiet in here. Whew. All right. We're just getting started. And, and, and he's like, I don't get it. And then he says this in the next verse, verse 3 and 4. He said, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Or Esau have I hated, and Jacob have I loved. And I'm like, why would you put that in there right there, God? Well, he said, because I'm trying to get this across to my kids. Why would he love Jacob and hate Esau? And I love Jacob, and I love that he loved Jacob because Jacob didn't have it all together. Do I hear an amen? amen. Jacob didn't do everything right. Matter of fact, he was a liar and a deceiver, but the reason he was lying and deceiving is because he had such a high value on the blessing of God. He wanted the blessing of God. And how many know it's not a good idea to cheat and deceive for it? Amen. But God's looking at his heart, and he says he'd give up everything to get the blessing of God. And here's Esau said he sold out for a bowl of beans. <laughs> Esau sold out because of his fleshly carnal appetite. And he, actually, the word Esau even, even refers to earthly, fleshly. See, he despised the blessing. The inheritance of the Lord. Esau did. It don't mean nothing to me. I'd rather have a bowl of chili. I'm hungry right now. I'm hungry right now. Sold out for a bowl of beans. He should have been. It should have been Abraham. I'm just going to say, you can finish his life. Abraham, Isaac, and. Well, but that's not what it is. What is it? Abraham, Isaac, and. Who was the firstborn? Esau or Jacob? It should have been Abraham, Isaac, and Esau. But he sold out. Lost his birthright. And what do we sell out for in America today? What's our bowl of beans? What's your bowl of beans? Some people, it's video games. <laughs> I was going to say, some people, it's other games. <laughs> And I'm not trying to pick on anybody. Everybody's got, everybody's got something competing for your heart. Let all the other names fade away. Until there's only you. 
So that's the battle. Would you be in that battle right there? I am. I got ways to go, but you know, he brought me some ways. I got some stuff out of there. But he's like, I want that place and that place. I'm like, oh, Lord. And let me just say this. When it says deny yourself, take up your cross, it's not that he never wants you to go to a ball game. It's not. The Chiefs don't play this week, but if they did, I'll be watching it. And leave me alone, too, while it's on, because and I'm into that. Amen? He don't mind that. He just wants to know that that doesn't have me. And he comes first. Amen. Amen. How many of you guys? Let me give you a little, little, little tip here. Like I like to play golf, and there was a time when golf was so important to me. You remember a long time we had five kids. She was crazy kids, and God just like nailed me when we were in the revival out there, and and He challenged me, and I took my golf clubs, and I went and gave them to my sister plays keyboard, her husband's buddy. I said, here's my golf clubs, you got it. And I didn't play golf for seven years. <laughs> and, Amen. And, and, but it wasn't that God didn't want me to play golf. I, I play now. I enjoy it more than I've ever enjoyed it in my life. I don't get to play that much, but I love to play. And I've been done looking at the weather. My day goes off tomorrow, and it's going to be 61 degrees. So you might want to find me. Guess where you're going to find me tomorrow afternoon, brother? See, God's not against that. Amen. But what he wants to know, is that more important to you than, than him? Or is that, uh, you know, is that car, or is that money, or is that, how about this? Is that God? Is that girl that don't even serve the Lord? And some people, it's a TV guy. I'm just telling you, it could be anything, couldn't it? So I'm not trying to pick on everybody, amen? God's an equal opportunity God, amen? How many, how many got something you're working on, right? I was looking at that, okay? See, God, I love Jacob. You know he's not perfect. No, he doesn't have it all together. But he puts high esteem and high value on the things of God. And he would do anything to get the blessing and the favor and the birthright that, that, you know, that he wanted. And God said, I love Jacob. And he said, I won't quit fighting in you until you bless me. Where's those people in the church? We're like, whatever, church. I hope it don't last too long. And I'm just saying, but Jacob, no. He's, God, he's wrestling with God. God said, let me go. He said, I ain't letting you go until you bless me. That's why he loved Jacob. Where are those people with the tenacity that said, I ain't quitting, I ain't stopping I value the anointing, the presence of Almighty God. Amen? So Esau have I hated, Jacob have I loved. And then let's go down here. I'm going to put it up on here because I don't have it in my Bible. But it's going to be on the message. We'll start with verse 6, okay, guys? Verse 6. And then we're just going to go through this. And I, that's the part that I don't really have to preach. But I probably will, but I don't have to. But And, and we'll start with verse 6. It, it, it says, if I am your father. Let me raise your hand if God is your father. Okay, most of you. Okay. <laughs> Can you get that? The message Bible, Malachi 1 6. Yeah. And uh, I, I had written it out, and then we're just going to go from there. Raise your hand. God, he said, If I am your father, is he? Yeah. And then he's asking his own kids, Then where's my honor? Haven't I not loved you? Where's the honor? You know, one of the commandments in the New Testament the children. Obey your parents and the Lord. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise that it will go well with you and you will live long on the earth. How many want it to go well with you? How many think you start with honoring your father, your heavenly father and your earthly father? You said, well, my father was, but he brought you into the world at least, didn't he? Honor him for that. He gave you life. Maybe he wasn't there for you, but you can still honor him. If you see, like, hey, at least he, he gave me life. And I'm praying for him. Amen. So, so it says, if I am your father, where is my honor? If, and, and, and a worker is master. So if I am your father, where is the honor? If I am your master, where is the respect? Who's talking here? God's talking. He's like, hey, guys, have I not loved you? Am I not your father? How many, how many last time I checked? He's creator. God. We're not. Come on. If I am your master, is he? Where's the respect? Where's the fear, the reverence of God anymore? 
I told you it was going to be quiet. Listen to this. This is good. The God of angel armies is calling you and me on the carpet. I know some of y'all don't know what it is to be in grade school and get called to the principal's office. Anybody old enough to remember that? And they didn't have a nice little conversation. They had a paddle. And it had holes in it. Make it sting a little more. And this is what God said. Listen, listen, kids. I'm calling you to the principal's office. I'm calling you up on the carpet because this ain't how it's supposed to be. If I'm your father, where's the honor? If I'm the master, where's the respect? See, where's the fear of God? He's God. We're not. You know, I told him, he could take his little pinky and go, ping, and the whole earth would fly through the universe. He could go, and we'd all be gone. And we're playing around with him. We're taking him for granted. He cares about his name. He cares about his honor. And it says, and then let's just keep reading here. I'll just keep reading. But we've been called onto the carpet today. Amen? You priests despise me. Now, in the Old Testament, they had Levi who was the tribe, the priestly tribe. But in the New Testament, he said, now you're a, you're a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. You fathers, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand. Daddies, you are the priest of your home. Amen. You are called to be the spiritual leader of your house. You are the priest of your home. He said, my priests have despised me. And you say, not so. How did we despise you? And the word despise, if you want to look it up, it means to make common to, to make a little value, to disregard, to make vain. Remember, don't take my name vain. Empty, shallow. Yeah, I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. That's easy, isn't it? But he's saying, he's saying you despise me. How? <laughs> By your shoddy, sloppy, defiling worship. Shot Not good. <laughs> and messed up. In other words, like, whatever. Can I tell you one of the biggest enemies in the church today is the spirit of apathy? Whatever. 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 I don't know. I, I don't know. I might go to church. I don't know. Whatever. I might, I, might, I might stand up today. I don't know. I think about the law, whatever. You know, I don't know. Let me just say when it comes to standing up, I know when some people physically can't stand up. That's, I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking about people who are strong and physically able. You know, they're getting out, and people don't even know. So, so me teaching this, I was thinking about this. I was getting ready. I don't know. I haven't heard this preach in a church in a long time. I've not heard anybody preach this. Because it ain't politically correct. This ain't how you build a big crowd. <laughs> like, well, okay, I told somebody's going to come back next week. You know, I'm just kidding. You know, but how many know what I'm saying? This is not being preached. It's not being taught. But I'm just telling you, this is at the heart of what God is doing right now. There, is, there has been a shift. There has been a Nazarite cry that's going forth. And it is the people who are going to respond to this right here and say, listen, yeah, I've been a part of that apathetic, lukewarm Christianity. And I don't want nothing to do with it anymore. I'm ready for the real deal. I'm ready for the real stuff. And let me tell you, you got to get this right if we're going to get that right. You can't come with an apathetic, complacent, half-hearted, you know, attitude and expect to have a mighty, powerful church. But it all is whatever. Yeah, I guess he could heal, but whatever. You know, and I'm just, I'm not picking on, I'm being hard on it, but, but I'm just saying, I, I, I want to have, even if it's a smaller group of people, <laughs> I would rather have a smaller group of people that are truly on fire. I say, God, I get this, man. I get this. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive us for our shoddy, complacent attitudes. And I know that's none of y'all. None of us but but what, what do you mean by defiling? What, what defiling about it? When you say the altar of the God, the altar of God is not important. I'm just going to keep reading. Anymore, worship 
Worship of God is no longer a priority. That's defiling. And when you offer worthless animals and sacrifices and worship, animals that you were trying to get rid of, blind and sick and crippled animals, isn't, it, isn't that defiling? Try a trick like that with your banker or your senator. How far do you think you will get? The God of angel armies asks you, get on your knees and pray that I will be gracious to you. And see, I mean, I don't love preachers all by itself, doesn't it? I said, we hung up. Thank God we live on this side of the cross. Amen. 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 Aren't you glad that every time we sin, we don't have to go get a little lamb or a little sheep or a little dove and bring it in. And the priest got to literally, physically slay that thing, cut its throat, get the blood, bring it on the altar. But see, this is still Old Testament, okay? But how many know now we have a different kind of sacrifice? He wants us to be a living sacrifice. He wants us not to bring an animal. He wants us to bring our life. He wants us to bring our heart. He wants us to bring our very being and pour it out on the altar. But he said, wait a minute. But here's what happened. You're bringing me your leftovers. You're bringing me your blemish and the things you don't want. And offering me your leftovers. Try that with your boss or your government and what do you think they would think about that I said we're talking about God our Father the creator of all things so that's what I'm saying I'm fighting for this I mean, when you come on Sunday morning man, this is my Super Bowl right now This is I get fired up my, my heart rate gets way up it takes me a while to calm down on Sunday morning I'm not serious I'm serious I'm telling you the truth my heart's going like this. <laughs> because you know what? There again, this, this, this is what I feel like, God, I want to do this for him. I want to do this for him. Why? Because of what he's done for me. I'm, I'm getting a little older now. Man. He's put up with me for 63 years. And, and in my heart, more than ever, it's like, God, let me take these last years, these years, these, these years of my life, and do everything I can to go out in a blaze, amen? amen. Fighting for the honor of his name. <laughs> Fighting to have the church that says, when we come around here, we're here to worship the Lord, amen? We ain't bringing him our leftovers. We ain't bringing him our stuff we don't want. We're bringing our God the very best we got to bring, amen? Because anything less than your best is not worthy of this great God. That saved us. He deserves our best. Amen? I remember when I used to play ball, they said, don't go swimming the day before. Don't stay up and watch movies the night before. Get to bed, because you've got the big game tomorrow. <coughs> and how many people, no regard to Sunday morning. And oh, Pastor, you don't understand, man. I, that movie was so good last night, I had to watch it twice. And come into church and... <gasps> Bring him in leftovers, leftovers. He gave you real energy to something else. <laughs> and I'm just saying, how many of like, we have to come in like say, you know what? Tomorrow's a big day. I ain't going swimming today. And I'm just, that's pretty crazy. But I'm, I'm just saying, how many think that ought to be the attitude? We do it for a ball game, but we won't do it for God. You know, I'm just saying, there's an attitude there, like, wait, wait a minute, where's the people say, wait a minute, this is our big day tomorrow, man, we get to get together with our brothers and sisters, we're going to praise, I'm beautiful this morning, how you guys praise God. I love that, man, that's like the Super Bowl right there, amen, that's like the spiritual, that there's nothing better when we get together and worship God with everything within us, because he's been a good God, amen, he deserves the glory, he deserves the honor. We come here and say, man, we're going to praise him with everything that is within us. I don't care if people think we're crazy or not, man. <laughs> you know, I mean, you gotta, like, like, and sometimes just getting older helps you in that, because, like, you kind of get older, you're like, I really don't care that much anymore what you, everybody thinks. <laughs> and I used to be absolutely controlled by that. The fear of man is a snare, amen? amen. But I'm getting to where now it's like, listen, you know, it, it ain't just about having a big church. Right. Because that's it's been 20 years, and it's been kind of like this. It's true. But it's about having the church say, hey, when we get together, we got some champions of honors amongst us, amen? We got some Davids that are going to take out the lives, amen? We got some people that say, hey, we're going to come around here, we're going to protect this house, amen? We're going to protect the honor of this house. We're going to protect the honor of this house. We're going to worship our God in this place, amen? 
And we're not the only place, but I want to be one of the places, amen, where we are people who understand and we are fighting for the honor and the glory of his name. Amen? So let's keep going here. It says, uh, okay, let's keep going with verse 10. Here's the verse I want to get. You priests have gotten everyone in trouble with this kind of conduct. Do you think I'll pay attention to you? And how many want God to pay attention to you? See, so let, let me just tell you this. God's not going to show up in a place he's not honored. You know the one, number one need of a man is honor. And do you know that men will tend to gravitate to the place they're honored? And I like to tell people this. You can't be a jerk and expect to get honored. I mean, I thought that'd be a great big amen right there. Let me say that again. Men, you can't be a jerk and expect to receive honor. I can't be a jerk and expect to be honored. But if you'll just try. See, God, God created this whole thing, and he put that in us, guys. And we will tend to gravitate to the place of honor. Am I right, guys? I heard one guy said, men are the only one of God's creation that will slide down a mountain and raise your blades into an ocean of lemon juice just to hear somebody get up and say, whoa, you're the man. Because we're made like that. They're like, eat. you know, it's like, we just need a little honor. You want your guy to go work out at the gym? Say, man, look at them muscles. Look at that muscle. Then that guy's going to be running to the gym. Woo, he's up there going like this. Man, did you hear what she said? She said, look at this muscle. <laughs> Am I right about that? The see, wise. You know, you need to honor your husbands. Because if they're not getting there, let me tell you, husbands, you need to live in such a way you can receive honor. Amen. You know? Because, you know what I mean? Where are those men at? That, that, that not perfect, but they're, they're honorable. I'm like, honey, I'm here for you. I'm trying to do what's best for you. And I'm struggling. You just be talking with my wife a little while. I'm, I'm, I'm trying. But I, 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 I'm, the, I'm not the greatest at a relationship, you know. I'm working at it. I'm aware of it. And I know there's things that I'm trying to do to, to, to honor my wife. She's an amazing, amazing person. Amen. She deserves it. We're the little guys that say, wait a minute, I'm living in a way where your wife, let me tell you, your wife will follow you to hell and back. Amen. If you just do the right thing and, and show some honor and live as a man of God, not perfect. They don't care if you're perfect. They don't even care if you have hair or not. <laughs> Am I right about that, ladies? So that gives somebody hope out there, amen? That's not what it's that. They, they're more into security, stability. Do the right thing. Be a man of honor, amen? And so anyway, we're going to keep going here. And then we get down here. The God of angel armies asks you, Here's, what, here's, my, here's my verse. Why doesn't somebody shut the temple doors and lock them? Then none of you can get in and play at religion with this silly, empty-headed worship. See, Connie, why, won't, why would your parent, why wouldn't her parents come to church? Because they were hypocrites. 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 Oh, I see you how you're doing on Sunday, but what you doing on Monday? I hear you on Sunday, but I also hear you on Monday. And by the way, I can't hear what you're saying because what you're doing is speaking way too loud. And see, and I'm not saying being perfect. Ain't no one of us in here ever going to come close to being perfect. But what I am saying is be real. And if you got a struggle, man, people, how I many know you can help somebody say, hey, you know what, I got a struggle? Oh, goodness, all right. I relate to that. You come in like with your Bible. Oh, you're lucky I'm here today. You got any problems I can solve? I wish you'd hurry up and shut up because I can fix you. <laughs> you know, like that's kind of like we can do that. But if you come in and say, listen, man, I'm really struggling. But I love God so much. And I'm trying to get this out of my life. And it keeps getting the best of me. But I'm going to keep getting up. And I'm going to keep trying. And I'm going to keep trying until I do this for him. Amen. And then I can say, God, I did this for you. I but if you shall know the truth, and the truth is going to set you free. I want to do it for him. I'm going to heaven. And in some ways, I can even live like hell until I get there because he'll forgive me. And I don't want to lighten grace or anything like that. But I mean, that like, 
You're forgiven. But how many know there's a time where it changes to a relationship and it changes to love? And now I want to do it for him. Amen. Because look what he did for me. Have I not loved you? Haven't I been there for you? Why are you treating me like this? I just, you know, I just think God deserves our very, very best. Absolutely. Our absolute best. Amen. Is there not somebody who would get up and shut the door on this playing religion and this silly empty headed worship? I am not pleased. Who said that? You went too fast over there. I am not pleased. The God of Angels Army is not pleased. And I don't. Let's keep going here. And I don't want any more of this so-called worship. I am, I am honored all over the world. And there are people who know how to worship me all over the world who honor me by bringing their best to me. And you know, when I read that, and, and I've, I've talked to this before, do you guys understand what's going on all over the world right now? That God is being glorified all over the world in a brand new way. If you go to Africa, if you go to Brazil, if you go to China, if you go to any nation almost on the face of the earth right now, there is a move of God, there is an explosion, and there are people who are coming back to God and are giving their hearts to God, the, the blind are seeing, the dead are being raised, the sick are being healed. I'm talking about for real, all over the world right now. God is being glorified all over the world. His name is being made great all over the world. And here's my thought. I think he wants to do it right here in America, amen? He wants to find some people that, listen, we're going to be champions of honor. We're going to rise up, shut the door, and say, listen, we want to be a place where God is going to be glorified and honored. Right here in the middle of America. And, and you know, and I love America. I thank God for America. But sometimes I think our, our blessings can almost become a cursing for that. That's why God said when you get to the promised land and all of a sudden you're living in houses you didn't build and you're eating food that you didn't grow and you're getting blessings that you didn't deserve, don't forget the Lord your God. And get complacent and apathetic. Amen? So, bring, we, we should bring them our best. Let's keep going here. They're saying it everywhere. God is greater. This God of angel armies. All except you. Instead of honoring me, you profane me. You profane me when you say worship is not important. And what we bring to worship is of no account. And when you say, <laughs> I love this, I love the message. I'm bored. <laughs> <laughs> and don't get me wrong, you know, I mean, I know, I know when there ain't no life in it, 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 you know, religion, religion is, is hard to, and I hope, I hope that's not what this is. How many other, a lot of bored people right now, right here, right somewhere in church right now, and they're like, whoa, when's this get over? This like this guy. You know, I heard once, we have a lot of people who struggle with insomnia, you know, and I said, and I heard this one guy said, this pastor was laying in bed at three o'clock in the morning one time, his phone rings, and this woman gets on his phone, and she says, I'm sorry to bother you past in the middle of the night, but I just needed to talk to you. My, and, and my husband, he's just really struggling, sleeping, you know, and, 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 uh, and I just wondered, Pastor, would you talk to him? <laughs> <laughs> you guys missed that. Because <laughs> he's coming over with the pastor talk, that goes right to sleep. Yeah, so, so anyway, but how we know, like, how many want to be a part of a church where there's life and all of a sudden maybe, maybe it is a two-hour service, but you don't even know it is a two-hour service because there's life in it, amen? There's something happening. There's something changing, okay? And so to me, that's what he's saying here. I'm bored. This doesn't do anything for me. You act so superior. Sticking your noses up in the air, act superior to me. The God of angel armies. And, and when you do offer something to me, it's a hand-me-down or broken or useless. Do you think I'm going to accept it? This is God speaking to you. A curse on the person who makes a big show of doing something great for me, an expensive sacrifice, say, and then at the last minute brings me something puny and worthless. I'm a great king, God of the angel armies, honored far and wide, and I'll not put up with it. Amen. I'm telling you, that preaches right there, don't you? <laughs> that preaches all itself. So, so okay, so, so that's a powerful, powerful. And whose heart is this? The burden of who? The Lord. 
to the, to the prophet Malachi. And, and I believe that God is in the same, he's the same yesterday, today, today, forever. And I believe that God is looking for champions of honor. Verse 10 says, is there not someone who will rise up and shut the door? Will rise up and shut the door. Do I hear an amen? amen. And if you keep reading, which I did, and you read chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4, it's an amazing book. But if you look at chapter 2, just verse 1 and 2, and I'm reading this out of the New King James, it says, And now, priests, that's us today, this commandment is for you. If you will not hear, and if you will not take it to heart, to give glory to my name, says the Lord. He, you know, he talked about sin and the curse. Now, how many know we've been delivered from the curse of the law? But back then he says, listen, when you choose to dishonor God, you know, I believe, I believe you, you choose to sell out for a bowl of beans. And in a way, I know that's a curse in itself, isn't it? See, like, like it says in the tithe, when you don't give the tithe, see, God doesn't curse you, but you remove yourself from the blessings of God. Let me see what I'm saying. And see, he goes on and talks about it in chapter 2. He talks about divorce. He said everybody's divorcing, everybody's divorcing, everybody's divorcing. And he's like, God hates divorce. It says right in here, God hates divorce. Everybody's divorced, 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 divorced. I'm just saying, God says, hey, that's what's going on. Then you get over to chapter 3. He's not done yet. And he says, listen, will you rob me? You're going to rob me? You're going to dishonor me with your money? Will a man rob God? And he says, oh, but yet you rob me. How? With your tithes and offerings. I got some people be very careful. You might be sitting beside a, a robber. Somebody might be driving a stolen car. <laughs> and I'm just throwing that out there because I'm not. How I many know we got to be taught? We got to be trained. We try to do that. But how I many know God's serious about this? How I many know the number one way you can honor God is with your money? One of the best ways you can honor God is that God this ain't mine, this is yours. Honor the Lord with the first fruits of all your increase. And then your barns will be filled with plenty. Your vats will break through with new wine. It'll go good with you. Say, honor, honor. No, I just think the money's like the beginning, little thing, and most people can't get by. You know, less than 5% of people in the church today tithe. No wonder we struggle financially. Man, if people tithe, our problem be, what are we going to do with all this? How are we going to be a blessing today? Well, I guarantee you that ain't how it is. I'm probably you ask for what? He said, will a man rob God? Will you dishonor me? Or will you honor me with your finances? Will you trust me? See, if I won't open the windows of heaven, pour out so much dust and you can't connect, I'll rebuke the devourer for your sake. Amen? And so, <laughs> I told you to wear your still to the shoes. Amen? And then, you know, so let, let's go to Malachi chapter 3. And I believe I'll put that down. And let me just show you, this is prophetic, okay? And then we're going to wrap this thing up. Verse 2. 1 in chapter 3. This is prophetic, okay? Tell me who you think this is. Behold, I send a messenger, and he will prepare the way before me. Who do you think to talk about here? Jesus. No, no, no. John the Baptist. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare you the way of the Lord. Prophetic. He said, hey, Jesus is on the way. Everybody said, Jesus is on the way. See, Malachi, after it was written, there went, they went, the church, the people of God went into a 400-year span of darkness and doom. God wasn't even with them. They were lost. 400 years between Malachi and Matthew when Jesus showed up. But Malachi said, listen, there's a day coming of reckoning. There's a great and awesome day of the Lord coming. He's going to deal with some of this stuff. Amen? And it says here, He's going to send his messengers, and he will prepare the way before me. Look at verse next. And the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. Know you not that we are the temple of the Holy Spirit? And, and so, just in closing, you know, I read this, and I thought, wow. But listen, let's go forward just a minute as we close, and, and just turn over to the Gospel of John, chapter 2. We'll, we'll stop here, okay? Remember we went, remember when Jesus said, I must be about my father's business? Anybody remember that from last week? What was his business? Honor. Restoring honor. 
to his great name, okay? John chapter 2, starting with verse 13. And he's going to put it up there, I believe. Is it up there? Okay, I'll just read it up there. It says, Now the Passover of the Jews was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem, and he found in the temple. What did Malachi said? He's coming, and when he comes, where's he going to go? To the temple, to his father's house, because he cares about the honor of his father's name. He's all about the honor of his father. That's the father's business. Restore honor to his name. How many think we ought to be about the father's business? And so he it says in, so he went to Jerusalem and he found in the temple those who sold oxen and sheep and doves and money changers doing business. I like to put it this way. They were all about their business, not his business. Hmm. All about their business, not his business. I can tell this is like. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, okay. It's the truth, though, isn't it? And when he had made a whip, you know, and I just, listen, I just want, I just want to get this straight. He didn't fly off the handle like some of us. He didn't just lose it and start screaming and yelling. No, he went and got the stuff. I don't know if he went to True Value, I don't know where he went, but he went somewhere and got what it took, and he sat down. I don't know, it takes a minute to make a whip. And I think while he was sitting there making a whip, he was watching what was going on in his father's house. And he was watching the dishonor, the disrespect, the greed. It was all about them. All about them prospering. All about, and they were lying and cheating and selling uh, lambs and doves at exorbitant price. I even heard they would sell like you a, a turtle dove and then take it and act like they went and sacrifice it and come right around the corner and sell the same turtle dove to somebody else. That's corrupt. And Jesus is sitting there making a whip. And he's watching people come, thinking, oh, hey, honey, we're going to get it together. I'm done with this old life of sin. I'm so sick and tired. And you know what we're going to do? Let's go to church tomorrow. Let's get up and go to church. Because there's hope, gotta be hope at the church, right? Let's go find some light. But Jesus said, if the light is darkness, how dark is that darkness? Yeah. So people get up and they come to church come, and they're like, man, God's gonna turn our lives around. They're gonna accept us here. They rejected us out there. They're, I know if I go to the church, they're going to love me. I know if I go to the church, they're going to accept me. I know I might be different, might look different, might whatever different. But this is the house of my father. And Jesus is making a whip, and he's watching hopeless people come. And listen, is this possible? Leave more hopeless than they came. Because now they don't want nothing to do with church. Forget that. That's a bunch of hypocrites over there. Acting all holy like they with their nose stuck up in the air, thinking they're better than everybody else. I mean, I ain't gonna help nobody, you guys. So when we're real, it's like, whoa, God has done so much, but I got so far to go. But it's so real. God is so good. And he, he gives me another chance every week. And he never gives up. Man, I want to love him. I want to bring honor to his name. Amen? See the difference? So Jesus making this whip and he watches somebody sick come. I mean, you realize sick, you have a broken heart. And honestly, is it possible they leave more sick than when they came? Is it possible they leave more blind than when they came? Is it possible they leave more dead than when they came? He said, listen, you guys, you, you're sons of the devil and you make your followers twice the devil of yourself. Because all you're feeding them is religion. And so he takes the whip. And we know what he does. He cleans house, doesn't he? I want to see that when we get to heaven on the DVR. <laughs> I said, Lord, I know he's got a reporter up there. I said, man, kind of like, okay, I want to see that part right there, amen? <laughs> but I just wonder what Jesus would do. And I need to say that he is going to He's coming back to his church. See, so when he comes, see, I don't think we're talking about something off in the future. He's coming. 
He's working right now. He's moving right now. He says, I'm looking for my church right now. I'm looking for some champions of honor who will stand up and shut the door on dishonor. Amen? And if, if you keep reading here, and I love what the message says. He makes this with me, drives me, and he says, you, are you ready for this? I don't know what's up there, but it says, you turn my father's house into a shopping mall. I'm mean, going to ask how people go to church today, since I'm on it. Good. And they're like, hey, Pastor, you know, come over and check your church out. It's a little warm in here, I think. I wonder if they get air conditioning. And does he know it's 2 after 12 right now? <laughs> I got stuff to do. I mean, you know, these chairs aren't too bad. And he preaches all the time. You know what they're doing? They're shopping. And, 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 if, and if they don't like it here, then, oh, you know what? I've seen a bunch of other churches on the way over here. I'm going to check one of them out. Maybe I'll find one they got better air conditioning. And you don't talk near as long as it costs. <laughs> that guy, I mean, we're in there now an hour. There's a front of it. But I'm, not, I'm not judging that. But here's what I'm saying. What about God? What do you want? How about this one? Hey, God, where do you want me? Where do you want me? Oh, you mean you want me to stay there? He never shuts up. You want me to go there? Maybe he has a reason for you to be there. How about you're not God? He is. How about you shouldn't be deciding where you go? He should. But that ain't how it works. We, we turn the church into a shopping mall. We are a consumer Christianity. We got Christianity light now. So if you go, you know, like they got like, Christianity life. Okay, I'm almost done. Verse 17. And he's going to put this up here in the And then they remember it. When he got the whip, he drove them out. And his disciples, I think they're watching. And their tongues like their mouths are wide open. <coughs> See, he told them, he told them, I'm coming. I'm coming to the temple. I'm going to clean house. I'm going to clean house. And the disciples are standing there with their mouths hanging open. This is sweet baby Jesus. <laughs> this is sweet baby Jesus. <laughs> it don't look like sweet baby Jesus right now. He's fired up. I'm just to be angry and sitting up. I think we're seeing righteous, holy indignation for the honor of my father's house. And his disciples says in verse 17, and they remember the scripture. You ready for this? This is pretty soon. Zeal, passion, Fire for my father's house has eaten me up. I'm not going to keep going. How many of me is the problem? See, passion, fire, zeal for his honor has eaten me up. It's no longer me that lives. What did that? Passion for his honor. Living for his name. And if you read the Amplified, and I am done, and I think he's going to put that up there, his disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house and its honor has consumed me. Amen? And that's why, you know, I put up there, protect this house. Protect this house. This house is going to be a house of honor. Amen. Let's stand up. And I guess when I thought about this, I, uh, I guess what we're going to give a chance to do and before we go is go back to Malachi. And you can just stick back up there. It's my altar call. I'm going to get a drink of water here. Malachi, uh, number one, verse 10. And, and here's what it says. Is there not one? And my question to this group here today, you know, I mean, this is very 
hard, serious, but truthful message, amen? Yeah, and it, it even scares me. <laughs> Is that okay? I mean, I don't mean it scares me, but it, it's like, like, it challenges me. So I'm not up here like acting like, hey, everybody, I'm doing this, now you need to do this. No, I'm like, I'm like, he's challenging us together. And I, I'm the leader, so I got to be willing to give it my best shot, man. And I got a long ways to go, but I, that's what's in my heart. I really want to do this. And what I'm, I guess what God wanted to ask in this group today, is there not one? Is there not one? And I believe there's a whole bunch. But is there not one who he's been so good to? Yeah, he loved me. He was there for me when nobody else was. He never gave up on me. He's given me so many chances I don't deserve. I'm only here because he's good. I'm only here because he loved me. But nobody else was loving him. And so, is there not one among us who will say today, I don't know about you, but as for me, I'm going to rise up and shut the door. <coughs> I'm shutting the door on dishonor and disrespect. And from now on, by the grace and the mercy of God, I'm going to do my best. Everybody say my best. I'm not going to be perfect. I'm not going to be perfect, but I'm going to do my best from my heart to live in a way that brings fame to his name and honor to his name. And when I don't, and you know, it ought to break our hearts. That's why I ought to break our hearts. See, because everything we do is either going to be fame to his name or shame to his name. Because you carry his name. I carry his name. And my goal is to bring Way, fame, fame, fame. And even David and some great people of God, you know, they fell and for that moment. And how many of them pierced their hearts? But that's why I said David is a man after my own heart. Because as soon as he falls down, he gets right back up and says, you know what? I'm getting, I'm, that brings honor to God's name, doesn't it? Man, I love him so much, I ain't stopping. Quit and go weird. Stop and do what? No, I'm getting up. And this time, I'm going to do this for him. Amen? Amen? By the grace of God. So I'm going to open up the altars this morning. And by coming up here, you're just making a new commitment and say, God, if you'll give me the grace, burn this same zeal in my heart that Jesus had and say, we're going to start right here in this temple and I'm going to get rid of the dishonor. No more shopping mall mentality. No more apathetic mentality. No more bringing God my leftovers. From now on, God, my heart is to give you my very, very best because anything less than that is less than what you deserve. Amen? Amen. Lord, we just thank you today. And what I start with me, and I, I just want to make a new commitment to you, Lord, right now, to give you my heart and my life. And like we said, we start at his feet. We start at his feet. And I give you an opportunity this morning if you want to, or you can do it right where you are, I don't care. But I think I think it's really important to take that act of faith and step out and say, listen, I'm coming to your feet, I'm coming to the altar. And I'm bringing you my best this morning. I'm bringing you my best.